Hi, you're about to watch a video about a library I'm really excited about, P5Speech. I'm going to introduce what P5Speech is and who made it in a second. But before I do that, I just want to mention I have a, a small error in the code in this video. Um, if you look at this video's description, I explain what that error is. It's a, it's a minor thing, but if you're typing along, you might run into an issue. So take a look at that description and you'll see what it is. Now enjoy the video. Hello, uh, I am here again in my chatbot series. I'm going to do two tutorials and then some other stuff about something called P5JS speech. So I'm going to get to what that is in a second. But the reason why I'm doing this is as part of the chatbot series, I want to investigate chatbots that a human can interact with by typing and chatbots that a human can interact with by speaking. And so in order to do the speaking part without purchasing some kind of proprietary <laughs> device from some company that's supposed to be your assistant or something like that, um, I, which I will look at later eventually. Um, I want to see if we can do this in a bit of more of an open source way. We looked at RiveScript. Um, so can we just, can we converse, can we talk to the browser, the web browser, have it listen to what we're saying and talk back to us? And the answer is yes. And so there's a library for P5JS, um, which is uh, which was created by Luke Dubois from uh, the Integrated Digital Media Program at uh, New York University's Tanner School for Engineering. The Ability Project is part of the Ability Project's research, which is an interdisciplinary research space dedicated to the intersection between disability and technology. So it's a great program. It's a great research group. Um, you, can, you can imagine why uh, speech to text and text to speech could be um, useful in this area for, um, for, uh, for accessibility of different uh, tools that exist on the internet. Okay, so that, which is a really important topic. So, um, but I, in this video, just want to kind of learn how the library works and kind of do a few playful things with it. So this is the web page for the library. I recently made some changes to the API, the naming convention of some of these functions. Um, and so uh, what's, what's here right now might actually be different than what you see when you go to this page. Um, but so I'm going to use this new naming. Oh, and this is a demonstration, but I'll come back to that. All right, so let's just, let's first look at how easy this is to use, which I think it is. It is, it's easy, it's going to be easy. So the first thing that you're wanna, going to want to do is actually download the Job, the library from GitHub itself. And I will provide in this video's description a link to where you can download that JavaScript file. You can see that I've downloaded it here already and it's part of my project. Now, how you end up incorporating this library into your example is going to be different depending on what text editor or development environment you're using and hopefully I can help you with that. But for the way that I'm working right here is I just have all the P5.js libraries and I'm adding P5, speech.js and I've got to make sure also then I go to my, um, uh, sorry, I go to my index.html file associated with that, this sketch and I go right here, copy paste this and I'm just going to add a reference to P5 speech.js. So let's even see if that does anything. I'm going to go back to the browser and hit refresh. Okay, nothing. But at least I'm not, I don't get, I'm not having an error. So let me look at the most basic thing that you can do with the speech library, which is just have the browser speak. So if I go to the GitHub page and I look down here, this is kind of just a little bit of code. So I'm going to grab this. Um, I'm going to go to my sketch.js. In setup, I'm going to add, and I'm going to change this to let. And I'm going to say, have it say coding train. So what I need to do, and I think this is going to be okay, but there's, there's, a, there's a bunch, of, there's a variety of issues that I'm going to show you and, and things that you could do. But just, just for the basic idea, I need to create a P5 speech object, voice equals new P5 dot speech, and then I just need to call voice dot speak. Let's just see if this works. Ah, this is something I'm going to show you in a minute. Coding train. Did you hear that? Coding train. It speaks to me. Okay, so that's basically it. So one of the nice things is I'm done. Like if I have some text, you know, I could have a whole interactive system when I click the mouse or I do this button or whatever, and then, it's, then it speaks and it doesn't speak. It could say anything. The text could be generative. It could use any of my, you know, weird, crazy, like generate poetry uh, examples. But there, the reason why I, this is not going to just end this video right now, is the library actually provides a bunch of other features. Now these features are dependent on the web speech API and if I understand it correctly, um, you're kind of limited to what the browser supports. So which voices are available, does it actually work? So I'm doing this all in Chrome on a Mac and I imagine some of you might try this in different browsers and different operating systems. So let me know what works and what doesn't work. Maybe we can contribute to the library if it doesn't work in a certain browser to help it work. But again, the browser has to support the web speech 
uh, feature. And okay, but one of the things you can do is actually change the voice. So let's, let's look at how I might do that. So I think I can say something like console log voice dot voices. So in this voice object, and I probably, maybe I'll call this speech, just to be less confusing. There is a property which is a list of all of the different voices that are supported. So let's hit refresh and look at this. Oh, voice is not defined. All right, speech. Coding train. But look, it's empty. So here's the thing. You don't have to wait for it to be ready if all you want to do is use the default voice. But if you want to try a different voice, you need a callback, an event callback that says like, hey, I've loaded all the other possible voices. And the way that you do that is by um, passing in an argument to the new P5 speech constructor. I can say something like voice ready. Then I can write a function called voice ready. And in that function, I can console log speech.voices. I think this is going to work. Coding train. So now we can see this whole list of voices. And what, what, there's a lot of them. Like there's 82 of them. And what's one that I might want to be interested that I'm interested in? Look, they all have names. So we can look here, and, and the name is actually important. It's the key word you can use to assign a different voice. So I happen to know there's one called cellos, I think. So one thing I want to just add here is I'm just going to add the mouse press function. And in the mouse press function, I'm going to say uh, speech.speak coding train. So let's just make sure this works. Oops. Ah, so I now need to make speech a global variable. Let speech. Hit refresh. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. So every time I click the mouse, it speaks. But in theory now, I should be able to say, let's just try assigning a voice. Speech dot voice. Let's, what was the one I just looked at? It was called Moira. Well, let's, let's look at a different random one. Uh, um, Alice. Let's try Alice. Now, I don't know if this is right. Let's see if this is right. I don't remember the... Uh, Speech.voice is not a function. So it's not voice. I, I should have remembered this. It's set voice. I can say set voice Alice. Coding train. Coding train. So there's Alice. One of my favorites, I think, is called cellos. Coding train. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry for being so weird. Um, I can barely hear that voice, but I, it makes me want to do something when I hear it, the cellos. Um, so let's just do something. One thing I could emphasize here is if these are the voices, I could say let uh, voices equal speech dot voices. Then I could say um, let voice equal random voices. So the random function in P5 will pick a random element from the array and I could do set voice. I could probably actually just say set voice the voice or set voice dot voice dot name. Let's see if it works with just that voice object. So I'm going to say console log voice dot name. So now we'll get a random one each time. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. No. Coding train. It's the same voice. So I think we might actually have to say set voice Voice.name. Coding train. Yep. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. So now you can hear all the different speech, the, all the different voices. I'm not going through all of them, but I'm just picking a random one each time. All right, what are some other things you might want to do? Well, um, let me add a canvas here. This is something that's really useful. Create canvas. Uh, let's say 400 comma 100. And what I want to do is I want to display some information, like I want to animate something when the, when the browser is speaking and not animate when it's not speaking. So there are some callbacks, if I could just remember what they are. Speech.start did, maybe? <laughs> um, start speaking. And speech.ended, and ended. And speaking. I think these are, so this is just like with the DOM library. If you've used the P5 DOM library, where you have like a slider or a button, and if the, you have a callback that you assigned, if you press on the button or if you move the slider, I'm now assigning a callback. And I might have gotten these names wrong. <laughs> I'm going to fix them if I got them wrong. But I'm assigning a callback to when, 
when the browser starts speaking and when it ends speaking. And so this means I need to write these functions. So I can say start speaking, background green, and then function end speaking. And this is, I'm not doing anything sophisticated in terms of the draw loop or any animation, but you could imagine doing something uh, background zero. And let's say background zero when it starts. So now if I load Holding the page, um, Holding train. oh yeah, it's working. I have Holding this, train. whenever. Coding train. Coding train. So that canvas turns green whenever the voice is speaking. So that's a useful thing you can do. And the other thing you can do, which is kind of nice, is you can change um, three things. The rate, the pitch, and the volume. And I believe, uh, so I believe it's like set volume. So if I made it like 0.1, it should be very quiet. Uh, set rate, uh, so let's, let's actually, let's just, so volume you can imagine. I, I believe the range is between zero and one. It might be something else, but we could look that up or experiment with it. But let's forget about the volume for a second because I want you to be able to hear it. Let's try set rate. And what I'm gonna do now is not give it a random voice anymore because I want it to be able to recognize what it's doing. So let's take out the set voice. So it's gonna be the default voice now. Oops, set rate is not a function. Set rate is not, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, my naming is a bit confusing. Set rate is something that you assign to the speech object itself. The voice is the, you don't, each voice doesn't have its own rate. It's the rate that it's currently gonna speak with that voice. So I'm just doing this wrong because I, this should be speech.setRate. Toting train, toting train. So you toting hear that's train. twice as fast, right? And if I were to say 0 0.5. Coding train. Coding train. It's much slower. Coding and then I can train. also I can also say speech dot set pitch. I don't know what the range is for this. I should, I'm gonna just say five just to see. Coding train. Coding train. Coding train. Okay. So train. Anyway, so you get the idea. Uh, let's put this the rate back to one and put the pitch to like zero point two. Coding train. Coding train. Uh oh, coding train. So I think what's happening here is this particular voice, it's sort of hard to pick up the lower pitch. So um, one thing I could do is just try, um, let's assign a specific voice. Uh, let's try that voice, um, Alice. And let's listen to that. Oops, I'm in the wrong. And let's listen to that. Coding train, coding train. And now let me set the pitch to lower. Coding train. Yeah. Coding train. So this voice, you can hear it a bit. It's a bit more obvious just with this voice. Coding train. And now that's Coding higher pitch. Train. I have another Coding example train. that I will link to as well, which just has a bit more. So this is an example. I'm not going to go through coding all of this, but as an exercise, this might be something you try. This is an example that takes all of those voice names and puts them in a uh, drop down menu. So I could pick bells. I can, uh, you know, I can change the rate. I can change the pitch. This one is a weird one to do. Right. It's catching up. I pressed the button too many times. So the cue of it speaking, I kind of, so anyway, so I encourage you to check out the code that drives this particular demo. Um, there's some other examples that are part of the P5.js GitHub repository. I mean, P5.js speech GitHub repository as well. So see what you can make. Make something that talks to you in the browser and let me know how it is. In the next video, what I'm going to do is have the browser listen to what I'm saying and print out in the browser itself what I'm saying. Okay, uh, so, so this was uh, text to speech, right? And I want to do speech to text in the next video. Thanks for watching.